Hi! So today I thought I would tell you about some of the books that I feel like literally every single person in the entire world needs to read because they're incredible and they're important and their themes are just those ones that I think everybody should read. So this is basically a list of just my favourite books that I think that uh, I'm basically just recommending to everyone in the entire world but um, let's get going. <laughs> so for each book I will read you the uh, blurb on the back just so you can get a brief kind of overview uh, and then there'll be links to where you can get the books uh, in the description in case you're interested. So number one is Seed by Lisa Heathfield. A story of a life lived in a cult. Fifteen-year-old Pearl has lived her whole life at Seed where they worship nature and idolise their leader Papa S but when a new boy from the outside arrives, Pearl experiences feelings that she never knew existed and she begins to realise that there is a darkness at the heart of Seed, a darkness from which she must escape before it's too late. This is just so good. This was the first book I think I read by uh, Lisa Heathfield or maybe the second, I can't remember, but it's my favourite one of hers and she's one of my favourite authors now. It's just so good it kind of explores obviously life in a cult which to me um has always really interests me uh, like for ages now um i'd love to research it more and try kind of write it my own thing um and it just really kind of intrigues me uh reading stories about like cult life because it's one of those things that um for just people everyday people you don't really think of life in a cult as being a kind of it's just so far from our reality that I can't even imagine what it would be like um, and stuff like this just kind of gives you a really good idea and it's just so well researched and it also kind of explores um, like how they look at like how they see womanhood and like the whole book starts with the main character getting her period for the first time and she's just kind of like collapsed on the floor because she thinks she's dying um and it's things like that that you just kind of think oh my god i didn't even realize that um people don't really know what periods are and they just yeah it's just it's so good and it kind of gives you an idea of what it's like to be um enclosed in this kind of um sealed kind of atmosphere of living within a cult. So that's Seed by Lisa Heathfield. Next is a sci-fi young adult and that is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. Um, I've got a proof of this so I've got my kind of really shiny like proof cover um, and I think yeah this is also I've also got this signed by Lauren James which is pretty cool. Um, this really introduced me to the kind of whole genre of young adult sci-fi, uh, especially like space sci-fi. I just love everything about this book. Um, that genre is now kind of my favourite genre of young adult and it's all because of this book. So this is the blurb of this one. Romy Silvers is the only surviving crew member on a spaceship bound for a new planet. She's the loneliest girl in the universe until she hears that a second spaceship has been launched from Earth with a single passenger on board, a boy called Jay. Their only communication is via email and due to the distance between them their messages take months to transmit and yet Romy finds herself falling in love. But what does Romy really know about Jay? And what do the mysterious new messages from Earth really mean? Sometimes there's something worse than being alone. This book um, was introduced to me at Yalk a couple of years ago um, and Lauren James was on a panel talking about sci-fi books I think and she was talking about um, the different theories that she used. Uh, she kind of studied all these theories when she did her degree and she used these theories about um, space-time and how kind of uh, time travels differently within space. All of these theories that she was kind of trying to really briefly talk about were just so fascinating to me and I also learned more about them when I went to see Brian Cox live. Um, he talked about some of the same theories which was really cool because I got to kind of hear a more in-depth scientific look at some of these theories that she used for this book. But um, 
in case it sounds intimidating, like, oh my god, scientific theories about space-time, like, no thanks, um, it's not kind of a heavily scientific book, like, you don't feel like you're reading a textbook. Um, the theories are kind of discussed a little bit, um, and you get all sorts of kind of equations and things pop up sometimes, um, but it's just so character based and Lauren James, I've said this before and I'll say it again, Lauren James is the queen of plot twists. Um, so if you love a good plot twist, um, this kind of introduced me to some of the best plot twists. Um, so The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James, read it. Next we have another one of my kind of personal favourites and this is one that you're probably sick of hearing about and that's Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman. Um, this book takes my entire heart. Uh, I love it so much. I read it for the first time. I actually listened to it on um, Audible for the first time um, a couple of years ago now and I just freaking love it. Like, <laughs> it's one of those books that I struggle to even talk about because all I want to say is just like, oh my god, it's so amazing, please go and read it. Everyone needs to read it, it's so good. So, here's the blurb. Caden Bosch is on a ship that's headed for the deepest point on Earth, Challenger Deep, the southern part of Mariana's Trench. Caden Bosch is a brilliant high school student whose friends are starting to notice his odd behaviour. Caden Bosch is designated the ship's artist in residence to document the journey with images. Caden Bosch pretends to join the school track team but spends his days walking for miles, absorbed by his thoughts in his head. Caden Bosch is split between his allegiance to the captain and the allure of mutiny. Caden Bosch is torn. And I don't know if you can see here, but the blurb is kind of written um, in two different fonts. Um, so each part of his life, like his life on the ship and his life kind of as a high school student, are written in two different fonts. That's basically how the whole book plays out. Um, it's so hard to even describe. I think it might be easier if you read my review. I'll put the link in the description in case you're interested in reading my full review of this. Um, it goes in depth into kind of um, mental health themes and these two kind of paths that play out are almost like two different worlds going on in Caden's head. So you've got his life just kind of as a high school student, he's just a regular kid, um, and then you've also got what's kind of going on in his head um, aboard this ship that's travelling to the deepest point of the Marianas Trench. Um, and you meet all of these really cool characters and you start to realise that some of the people that are with him on the pirate ship are actually pretty close representations of people that he knows in his real life. And that's when you start to realise, wait, hang on, there's something going on here where uh, you see these two different paths in Caden's life, kind of the path in reality and then the path in his head. And it's such an interesting view of mental health. And it's just that reason that I think everyone needs to read this book because good mental health rep I think is hard to come across. Another one that I don't have in my pile actually but um, another one that I'll kind of add to this video uh, as a side is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Barnard. That's another one where the mental health rep is so good and people um, can just see themselves reflected in the characters. Um, but yeah, Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman is just incredible and please go and read my review if you need to kind of, if you want to find out more about it because uh, I just want everyone to read this book. The thing that I love about this is that the chapters can be so short. Some of the chapters are like not even a page and it might be quite confusing to start with because it jumps about all over the place. I just love it. And you also get illustrations from Neil Shusterman's son and oh, I just love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Next, we have another contemporary young adult and it's another one where the writing style is really interesting. If you watched my last video, which was like my kind of this or that, choosing between my favourite books, then I mentioned this one and I talked about it quite a bit. This is One by Sarah Crossan. And if you're into kind of unique writing styles, then 
definitely read this one. This book is written in kind of Sarah Crossan's own sort of signature uh, writing style and that is like in free verse so she writes the whole book um, as if every page is its own like free verse poem and then they all come together to make this story and I'll try and show you a page now you can kind of see here that it's all just written in sort of little poems so here's the blurb of this one Grace and Tippy don't like being stared at and sneered at, but they're used to it. They're conjoined twins, united in blood and bone. What they want is to be looked at in turn, like they truly are two people. They want real friends, and what about love? But a heart-wrenching decision lies ahead for Tippy and Grace, one that could change their life more than they ever asked for. Ugh, this book just ripped my heart out and shredded it into a million pieces it's so sad but at the same time it's so hopeful and it's so kind of optimistic and um it really makes you kind of realize that you want to make sure that you're living your life um it's one of those books that you just kind of think oh my god I need to go out and do things I need to um stop sitting in my room and I just want to kind of make sure that I uh achieve things um <laughs> it's one of those the thing that made this book more special for me is that I'm an identical twin so um, I know being a twin kind of doesn't even compare, it doesn't start to compare to being a conjoined twin but the thoughts and things that they have as twins um, I really connected with so much being an identical twin. It just kind of makes the book even more heartbreaking for me. Um, I don't want to go into it in too much detail but um, I really think that everyone needs to read this book because it's just so special in the way that it's written and it's it truly is one of those books that I think you read and it just stays with you forever. So <laughs> one by Sarah Crossan, read it. And the final book which I had to include on this list as being kind of an important book that everyone needs to read and I'm sure that a lot of you who are watching this now have already read this um, and you will agree that everybody needs to read it and that's The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. 16 year old Star lives in two worlds, the poor neighbourhood where she was born and raised and her posh high school in the suburbs. The uneasy balance between them is shattered when Star is the only witness to the fatal shooting of her unarmed best friend, Khalil, by a police officer. Now what Star says could destroy her community, it could also get her killed. So obviously in the past couple of years there's been uh, there have been countless problems with um, shootings and things in America. It makes me feel so glad to live in Britain, despite Britain being hell at the moment. Um, <laughs> it makes me almost feel lucky to not be in America because it's terrifying hearing some of the stories. And um, one of the big things that people are experiencing at the moment is black teenagers being shot by white police and this book is a story of that um, and how the neighbourhood kind of react and come together when a black teenager is shot by the police for no reason. Like me now as a white person uh, it's kind of hard for me to say why this book is so important um, because obviously I can't completely relate to the hardships of being a black person and I've had so many discussions um, with people who really do know what it's like to um, feel different just because of your skin colour um, so this I had to end this video on this because you just you need to read it it's so important I know some of those other books I said oh you need to read because the plot twists are good or the writing style's great but this one is important just because of how relevant the themes are and how it kind of makes you realize um maybe how much we don't know about the hardships of um kind of living in a black community like this and 
being constantly watched by white police officers with guns. Like, that to me is terrifying and I can't imagine living that every day. Um, so this book kind of really helps you to get a kind of glimpse into the life of people who really do experience that kind of thing every day. Um, so everyone, everyone needs to read this. Uh, I think they're doing a really good job of um, getting it into schools and things um, so that students can read it. Um, if you're one of the people who hasn't read this already, um, then definitely you need to pick this up and read it. So there you go. Um, I hope you like this and let me know what books you think are either just your favourite books or ones that you think are important in terms of like themes or what you think people just need to experience because of the plot being great or unique or anything at all, let me know in the comment because I'd love to add more books to my it's my list that goes up to space already. Um, <laughs> I really want to read more books that I think are important to a lot of people. So yeah, let me know if you've got any more and if you agree with any of the ones that I've just shared and I'll see you soon with a new video. Bye!